So we are at Sifter's Record Shop in Burnage, without a doubt one of the most legendary, iconic record shops in the North West because of a certain band called Oasis and I'm delighted to say I'm joined now by Pete Howard, the man behind the shop. How are you doing Pete? I'm alright mate, alright yeah. Tell us a little bit about it, the shop, give us a bit of history of the shop. Uh, well I opened my doors in uh, 1977, uh, 46 years ago, which is a long time and uh, well, I've been here ever since, I've been in, in this spot in Fog Lane uh, 40 years and 6 years around the corner and the Mulder Thrill. Was it always a busy shop before the Oasis story came into it? Yeah, we used to do all right, but it became, became a lot busier after Oasis. You know, it was a, it was a lot more, you sort of breathed life into it to be quite honest with you. So, was, uh... so 1994, Oasis from this part of the world uh, released the Definitely Maybe album. One of the songs on that was Shaker Maker, mm -hmm. which featured the line, Mr. Sifter sold me songs. When did you know about that song and when it had been wrote and you were featured in it? Well, they came in and uh, asked permission. Well, apparently Coca-Cola, it was going to be um, uh, by, by, by the world of Coke. You know, it was based on the old song, which is before your time, by the uh, new, new secret. I'd like to teach the, the world to sing. sing. Yeah, that's Coca-Cola right, yeah. advert. Yeah. And, but they weren't going to let him use the work, so they had to find something else. Yeah. And Noel, but he actually said to me personally that he wrote it at the traffic lights outside this shop. We're not sure that's yeah. the truth. But they were interviewing him yeah. uh, a couple of years ago, and he did. He said that in that, you know. Yeah. But, Everybody sort of looked a bit there because he does tend to sort of, uh, you know, vary his answers depending on the uh, on the situation. Before that song came out, did you know the lads? Well, we only knew them after Supersonic came out, right? You know, because they were just ordinary customers and uh, the brother Paul came a lot, uh, and then Supersonic came out and then we saw the fella on the front. Do you remember them as customers in the shop, though? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, we rec as, soon as, as soon as Liam was on the front of Supersonic, yeah. we, you know, we recognised him. You know, so because yeah. then we were chatting about him, giving him handy handy hints if he ever got famous. You know, that sort of carry on. When they released Definitely Maybe, mm. did you know there was something about them then, or did it surprise you how big they went on to be? Uh, well, you never know, do you? You know, because it's never down to ability. You know, yeah. there were certainly, I mean, so many people coming here and they've got six album deals and all the rest of it, you know, and then you never yeah. hear of them again. Yeah. But they did seem to have something. Yeah. You know, and, uh, it's, yeah, 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 there was a big buzz about them at the time. So, yeah, we thought they were, you know, this time somebody was going to make you big. So, nearly 30 years on, you just said you're still surprised that people are still coming in talking to you about it. Well, and... yeah, because they, they talk about it like they're still going. Well, they, they spring 2009 or 10 or whenever it was, which is a long time ago. Everybody talks about them as they're still a current band, you know. I know both of them are uh, operating individually, but uh, like uh, that lead singer in 1975 said, uh, people would much rather be going to see Oasis, wouldn't they? So yeah. how much has the shop changed over them 30 years? Yeah, hardly at all, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I take it you do well off tourism and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, well, the Manchester Music Tour comes in yeah. um, most Saturdays. And yeah. uh, you know, all sorts of people, South Korean and Japanese, uh, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, we've sort of... So it's definitely benefited the shop then? Oh, what? I'll say, yeah, it's brilliant. You know, I've become like a, you know, sec second-hand seller, music seller, you know, signing autographs and doing selfies. For 29 years, I'll say. And it must have done well for the whole area and the community, the fact that so many Oasis and music fans descend upon Burnage well, to visit this record shop. Well, well, they do. And, you know, they, they come, like, from all over. I mean, well, they, you know, they, they come to, to look at the area, you know, and unfortunately, I'm part of it, <laughs> you know, which is, uh, which yeah. is good. For many years to come, hopefully. <laughs> Well, not for me, as you can see, I'm about looking at me, I'll be well. You're going to be here forever, you can already tell. I'll be well gone. I was just going to say, obviously having a record shop for so long, how do you think the music industry and the music that people come in to get, how do you think that's changed? And do well, you think it's changed for the better or for the worse? Well, outside of this shop, it's changed completely, hasn't mm. it? I mean, people are all downloading and they're, yeah. they're not buying. But in here, I mean, this is an old person mm. shop. So the collectors still come in here, so I'm really not aware of what goes on outside. I mean, I don't have a computer myself, I mean, so I don't know anything about the downloading. But I'm dealing with people who collect, and it's, it's, it's a different hobby, really. Do you miss anything about that time, in terms of music? Uh, not really, because, like, as I say, I'm still selling that mm -hmm. type of music, because half of, most of the stuff I'm selling these days is pre-1977. Right. Yeah. You know, so I'm sitting sort of the same titles in you know, 46 years later, you know. Like a, it hasn't really changed like a time well, in, well, like I say, in, in here it hasn't. I mean, if I get current stuff on CD stuff in the chart, mm -hmm. it doesn't fly out like it used to. It's not the cream because the kids don't buy. Mm -hmm. the, the youngsters don't. There's, you know, say, download. I mean, the, the student market's back. Mm -hmm. The over 18s, it's quite trendy. You know, the more thinking person 
goes into van, you know, mm -hmm. a quirky thing that the old folks do, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, mainly, um, it's Benjamin doesn't mm -hmm. <laughs> And what do you think about the whole vinyl revival? So like you're saying, it has come back. Well, it's great, it's great, but unfortunately, it doesn't come in. I mean, it's fine for them. I mean, if I can get them, I can sell them. Yeah. But people tend to keep them or sell them online. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. because they, they look at it online and look what they're going for. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're going for a fortune. You see, and I've always been a cheap shop. Mm -hmm. You can't suddenly change your prices midstream. Because yeah. like they say, they don't say, oh, uh, Sifter's got better stock in. They say, Sifter's put his prices up. You know, yeah. so you, you can't win. What music do you listen to, Pete? I listen to as well. I really, I do like everything. I mean, it's more sort of songs as opposed to artists. Yeah. I do like. I mean, even people I don't like. There's all. They've always got some songs I do like. Yeah. You know, so it's a, that's the best way to be. Do you like Oasis? Yeah, well, I like some of the songs. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite song? <laughs> I, like, I like most. Is it going to be Shaker Maker? Is that your favourite no, Oasis no, song? No, it's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like most of the songs on the Morning Glory, the second mm. album. I like most. That's my favourite. Most of the anthems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I couldn't really pick. A, a special one out of that because I do do like all those. You it's know, it's a classic, isn't it? It album? is. Yeah. Do you find that you get a lot of new bands coming in wanting the records to be sold in here because of its not history? Not so much these days. Right. No, the, you used to. You know, yeah. you used to have boxes yeah. of you know, twenty-five CDs. You know, just to sell them. Could never sell a single one of them. <laughs> and I, every time they came in, I said, "Well, if I said if we sell them, it'll be, you'd be the first. And never do. Do you keep much Oasis stock in here well, purposely, actually, or just what comes in? It's a second hand shop, it? so yeah. it's whatever people sell. Yeah. You know, and uh, unfortunately, I mean, everybody wants the vinyl, you see. Yeah. But unfortunately, you, you don't, nobody sells it, or if they do, they want far too much for it. And I'm better off not having it. Yeah. Because I mean, if also age groups are asking, I mean, kids are asking, they say, you know, you've got any vinyl, mate? And, and I say, yeah, here it is, £100. You know, you lose a friend, don't you? Mm -hmm. you know, it's like going into an art shop and asking for Rembrandts or something like that, and it, you know, yeah. it, so it doesn't work. So I'm probably better off not having them. But um, if I could get them reasonably priced, I would, you know, I would. Since like nearly 30 years ago now, 29 years ago, have you spoke to any of the lads since? Any of the Gallagher's? Do they keep in touch? Do they pop in? Well, the last time uh, I saw Noel, uh, he was with the CBS camera crew, and they were doing a documentary. Um, you know, sort of the, the the roots of Oasis, that sort of thing, and uh, that was a couple of years, two, three years ago. Now that, and I've not seen them since then. You know, yeah. so they, they don't. The mother, you know, Peggy still lives around here, but they don't really come around here. So, yeah. yeah, I bet you must have had quite a few other famous faces in wanting to see where Oasis and the Gallagher's bought the records from over the years. Uh, not that many, to be quite honest. Yeah. You get the old Coronation Street person, but uh, yeah. that's, that's, that's not it, really. No. Uh, so what does the future hold for Sifter's Record Shop? Still many more years to come yet? Well, yeah, we'd hope so. If I can hold, hold a, some sort of record for age, you know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be go as long as I can, you know. Yeah. You know, they'll probably find me dead by my 50p rack or something, you know, in the end. <laughs> but, uh, but you don't give up your hobbies, do you? Absolutely uh, not. This, this, is, this is a hobby. It's been an absolute pleasure meeting you and at the end of the day yourself and Sifter's Record Shop it's in the musical history books forever so it's been a real pleasure meeting up with you Pete. And you too. Thanks Thank Pete. You. Thank Cheers. you.